What's up guys? We are here on Wolf. We're going to be going over the SHTF-15 with Matt from Two Grown Sync and basically going tip to buck. So Matt. I'm just going to do a quick rundown of the parts, why we went with them, um, and what the purpose or idea behind each one was. Uh, for our muzzle devices, we got um, the Silencer Co. ASR mount on this one for BR. Uh, this is the three-pronged flash hider. Uh, we went with Silence Car Silencer Co. ASR mounts um, because their their interface here, this reverse threading that you see, has the most uh, compatibility with other manufacturers' uh, cans or suppressors. So like Huxworks works on here, um, Dead Air works on here, Griffin. Um, there's a lot of others that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head, but with the proper mount or hub, they will fit on this uh, um, interface right here. So that's why we wanted to go with silent scone. There's a few different options that we have, brakes uh, and, and things like that. For our handguard and rail, uh, BR has the duty optimized. We have two versions. We have an SHTF standard and we have a duty or suppressor optimized. The duty and a suppressor optimized have a Midwest Industries Night Fighter rail on it. Uh, with this rail, um, there's a little more material um, and the design has a little bit more rigidity in it. Uh, the reason is for that is uh, to limit or uh, negate flex as much as they could or we could in choosing this rail. Uh, and by flex, I mean when you're braced down on a barrier, on a car, at night with laser devices, laser aiming devices, you see less shift uh, further down range. And, and this rail does rate really strong in terms of flex and yeah, shift. I don't have big hands. Yeah. You can like really fucking get around yeah, that. And it is still thin and lightweight. It's M-lock, uh, as you can see, it's Picatinny on top. Plenty of space to still mount all your accessories and things like that. Uh, so for the duty and suppressor optimized, this is the one you have. For the standard one, it's their combat rail. Um, still, it's really solid. Uh, handguard and rail system, light, thin, all of those things. Uh, it's just the flex is not going to be as good on there, or flex negation, I should say. Uh, also to know, it's a really long barrel nut here, and that's what is the uh, main culprit to make it so sturdy and uh, rigid as a platform. Our barrels that we have are 4150 CMB steel that has been nitrided. Uh, we use a 223 wild chamber and a 1 in 8 twist. We went with the 223 wild chamber uh, just to get as much accuracy as we could out of the rounds. Uh, 223 wild chambers have the chamber of a 223, uh, but able to handle the pressure of a 5.56 round. And they do that by having the outer diameter within the chamber of itself of a 5.56 chamber. And they have a shorter uh, free bore. Um, free bore portion is unrifled portion of the barrel uh, before it hits the rifling. 5.56 have longer ones. So uh, this one just has a quicker path to the rifling uh, to get that stability. So it makes it a more accurate round. One in eight twists is better for 55 grains, 62 grains, which is what most fighting uh, ammo that we have, people are using. Uh, go with, so that's why we went with the 1 and 8 twist. Uh, 4150 CMB steel, we went with that uh, due to the thermal stability that 4150 steel has. Uh, it has a longer lifespan. Uh, the, the, the steel itself is able to um, handle more heat abuse uh, that comes with the round, so you just get a longer lifespan. Uh, typical stainless steel barrels, you're looking at, that even if they're chrome lined, or you're looking at uh, seven, 8,000 max lifespan before your accuracy starts to open up. With ours, you're looking at 13,000 uh, before we start to open up, and we're still about a one MOA uh, accuracy with most mil spec ammunition. Nitride also has a higher abrasion resistance than chrome lining, uh, higher corrosion resistance, and uh, you get it all around the barrel since it's been treated uh, instead of just in certain parts, usually closest to the chamber and the bullet. So that's why we went with this, all these things for our barrels. Uh, our receiver set is uh, 7075 T6 aluminum type 3 anodized, just standard mil spec right now. It is lightweight though, we keep our tolerances really tight, uh, so you will notice uh, for brand new guns with ours, um, they'll seem kind of stiff and um, not so much gritty, but stiff for sure. Uh, and a lot of that is just because we do keep our tolerances tight, we do that to keep a sealed system. Uh, the longer you shoot, the more you, the longer you have your rifle, the more... Uh, the steel or alloy or aluminum alloy, it doesn't matter the material, it's kind of going to slowly wear down. Uh, so if you keep those tolerances tighter in the beginning, the longer lifespan you will get uh, in the long run. And that's what everything we do is about the long run. We want these guns to just last as long as they can. Um, and so uh, typically around a thousand rounds when you'll really start to feel like the gun is, is coming into its own. For our safety selector, we have a 4590 short and full. So uh, he's a right-handed shooter. So on his, where his, uh, Ambidextric side would be is the short. Uh, we do the short, that way it doesn't get in the way when you have your uh, finger straight off the trigger. On his uh, normal side, it is a long. Uh, you can also set it up in 45 or 90 degrees. This is set in 45. It's just a quicker uh, fire uh, to fire selector to get to that point. We use the 
ACT trigger by uh, Geisley. Uh, right here, that's the trigger shoe. It's just your standard mil spec trigger. Um, it's about a four and a half pound trigger pull. What uh, I really like about this though, is that it, I'm a big fan of mil spec triggers. I'm, I'm not a big fan of cassette triggers. They get really gunked up after a while. Uh, not a, they're harder to open and, and to clean out. With a mil spec, you can pop it out. You don't even have to pop it out to clean it. Uh, but what Geisley or ALG did, sorry, uh, here is they uh, nickel Teflon coated uh, the parts here. Uh, and what that does is give it better friction coefficients now. So when these parts are rubbing up on each other, there's not that as much grittiness that you feel. Uh, so you get a mil spec trigger uh, without all the grittiness that some of these cheaper triggers might have. Uh, for our buffer system, we use just a standard, uh, well, it's not standard, it's the A5 system. Um, you can think of it as like an intermediate buffer system um, between carbine is short, uh, rifle is long, A5 is in the middle, intermediate. Uh, we have four and a half, five and a half, and six and a half. I'm a big fan of the five and a half ounce. It's a little bit heavier, so if you're shooting ammo that might be a little underpowered, uh, it, it is harder to cycle, but the benefit of it is with the higher powered rounds, especially with like your M855, your steel core uh, bullets, which I think is a really great and probably the best duty ammo out there. Uh, you get a flatter recoil and a softer recoil, so it really does do a good job of doing all of it. Uh, the buttstock options, he's got a B5 on here. Uh, we also have a Magpul MOE SL. I'm a big fan of both. I switch, I go back and forth uh, between both, um, but they're comfortable. They give a good cheap rest and a cheap weld and all of those things for natural aiming positions. And just real quick, it is a mid-length gas system. We uh, have a adjustable gas block or just your standard gas block. Uh, he went with the standard gas block. Um, and it, it, it's good both for suppressed and not suppressed. Our charging handles are uh, gas buster. So what we do there is we just raise the shelf to help limit the gas. And what I mean by a closed system, like there are no gaps there. Um, you can't see it. So gas coming out, uh, this does a good job of, of keeping gas away from your face, but also keeps a, does a good job of keeping debris from getting inside your receiver. We should talk about the bolt too, right? Absolutely. So the gas, and like I said, and it's an ambi, chandle, uh, ambi charging handle, um, which is nice. It's just an easier grip, uh, especially if you're wearing gloves and things like that. Our bolt, uh, this is the sand cut bolt. Um, this one, it just has some cuts in the load bearing areas like here, here, and some cuts on the bottom. Uh, the reason for those is just, um, if debris gets in there, it just does a better job of cycling in and out. Uh, the carrier steel is 8620 that's been shop peened, which is a hardening process. Uh, once again, just talking about longevity, trying to get as long uh, of a lifespan out of all of our parts as we can. So the tensile strength on a shop peened 8620 steel is really high. Um, really good Rockwell hardness scores and all of those. The bolt itself is 9310 super alloy. Um, uh, we have hardened steel extractors, hardened steel firing pins, hardened steel retaining pins, camshafts. Uh, the gas key is hardened steel as well. This is a parkerized finish, chrome lining where the bolt is coming in and out and out of the carrier system, uh, as well as uh, in the rear, and, and as well as the inside the gas key, there's chrome line there. And that's just to give it longer lifespan, better heat resistance and things like that. Uh, our pistol grip on here is the MP grip. This is a, we have two grip options. This is the slimmer one of it. Uh, this one's really good for like CQB, close quarter battles, anything 50 yards and in. You can really drive the gun. You get a really good grasp on here. I went aggressive with the stippling. Uh, I love that. For both, thank you. For both uh, uh, ungloved and gloved shooting, you just get a much better grasp on it. Uh, we also have a grunt grip, which is our A2 variant. It's a little beefier. Uh, I like it better for more like intermediate to longer distance shooting, uh, but this one is still a really solid grip. All of our grips are nylon 12 printed, you know, you, if you can break one, let me know and I'll send you a <laughs> And I think that's it, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Very nice. This is our rifle. Like I said, the whole idea of it is uh, just getting something that is going to last a really long time, be accurate and be reliable for the people out there. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get to it. All right, thanks for letting <laughs> me use your rifle. Yeah, of course, man. All Thank right. you.